Good evening. Welcome to the Canby City Council regular meeting uh, for June 5th, 2013. I apologize for our late start. We have had already an exec session and a work session this evening, so we've been rolling since 5.30. Uh, so with that, uh, we will stand up and uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Say so, uh, standing please for a moment of silence. Great, thank you very much. All right, so as, uh, as I stated, we had an uh, exec session earlier and we had a, uh, actually two work sessions on the uh, on some issues that we have tonight, the telecommunications pieces as well as uh, some curb, or not pavement cutting, not curb cutting, but pavement cutting. Um, and so uh, before we get any further, I want to read a proclamation that we have coming up here this very month here in our fair city, and that is the Canby Livability Day. Whereas the Canby Livability Coalition is dedicated to maintaining the quality of life in the community of Canby by empowering citizens through education, educational opportunities and, pro and by providing resources to preserve livability for future generations and whereas citizens, organizations and neighborhood associations are encouraged to select community service cleanup projects and activities that beautify the city of Canby can be before summer festivities. Now, therefore, I, Brian Hodson, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Canby, hereby proclaim the last Sunday in June this year as Canby Livability Day in Canby and encourage all citizens to join in this observance and volunteer on June 30th, 2013 at one of the cleanup sites given unto my hand this fifth day of June, 2013. And we have someone here to accept that tonight. Seeing nobody running up front to do that. Um, well, I will uh, do the best I can to explain. So Canby Livability Day is the idea of just get out, do some cleanups around town. Uh, the Canby Livability website has a whole list of projects that uh, people can be a part of and get out, help clean up, beautify as we head into our festivities this summer with General Camby Day and Camby's Big Weekend and car shows and rodeo fair. rodeo fair, everything. So please take a look, please volunteer. Uh, it's a great organization and it's a great cleanup and uh, you'll be amazed at the things that get cleaned up and found in our fair city. So I will thank them. I think Jill Marie Wiles is part of that group and I'm getting the affirmative from the audience there. Great. Uh, we'll move into communications. As none, Mayor. Great. So our first opportunity for citizen input and community announcements. Uh, it looks like I have, uh, so for non-agenda items, um, Mary and Carla, are you for the the public hearing on the noise variances or just is this a separate this is a separate issue from what's on the agenda correct I, I don't know what's on the agenda. okay sorry so we have we actually do have a public hearing for noise variances for two events that are coming up but i think that what's we're, it's about our email exchange that we have had so i will carla if you'd like to come up to the podium there and Hi, how are you? Okay. No, don't, don't be. be <laughs> you're fine. We just stand up here. Just it, it's you're fine. So if you feel comfortable, please have a seat and uh, state your name and please tell us uh, what you'd like to talk to us about. Uh, my name is Carla Lane, um, and I live here in Canby on Third Southeast Third Avenue. And there is an ongoing problem 
with um, not only car stereos but home stereos um, especially when the weather is getting nicer becomes more of an issue um, there are some particular um, tenants that are um, a problem and it says in your code that the Canby police take care of this problem but they don't because their hands are tied because of the um, hours that the code enforcement is so basically between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. is the only time that we can truly enjoy our homes and not have booming stereos come through our living rooms I live across the street from these particular people and I will have my windows and doors shut and my TV on and it still is boom, 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 boom. And um, I've worked with code enforcement, um, but with the car stereos and home um, entertainment systems getting more advanced, I think that the code needs to change because these people, even when they're spoken to, they know that there's nothing that's going to happen to them. So there should be some sort of warning that they get and some sort of repercussion or a fine after so many warnings. So, something needs to change with it. Okay. Um, have, have you talked with the code enforcer? I, and what was their response as far as the law is concerned is there their hands uh, are fine tied. It, the code enforcement person says their hands are tied all they can because do is of ask the municipal them. code right all they can do is ask them and and then once they she's even had the officer come and once they leave these people retaliate and it's, it's even worse so you know i have a disability i'm home all the time and this affects me sure sure Um, and, and Carly, I just you know, and I've shared, swapped a few emails as of late, and mm -hmm. uh, and I appreciate you, you know, um, reaching out to us and the city on on the issue. Um, I had some conversation with uh, Officer Innes today about about the you know they've responded you know when those, those complaints have occurred and whatnot, and that is a um, a challenging uh, piece to the to the whole um, the whole noise aspect. Um, you know that Greg and I had some conversation today about about this as well. Um, I guess my uh, and I know that Mary, you're here also on yeah. on that as well. Um, maybe we, Mary, we can have hear of your um, testimony as well or your comments, and then I guess we can have some conversation on where we may need to look at and what we may need to go or not go. So. Thank you, Carly. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Mary Schneider, and I do live next to these uh, two individuals. Um, they, it's continuously every day. Uh, the, even the children are totally out of control. Um, they wrestle, they bang on the walls, they honk their horn uh, 10, 20 times a day. They sit on their couch just to harass and harass. They're not breaking the law, so you can't call the police. Um, a new owner took over the ownership. I tried to talk to him and he said, I am not your babysitter. If you have a problem, go to the authorities. Um, the person next to me um, is known for a drug house. Uh, she's been arrested. Um, the owner previously let her come back in. The new owner now has got uh, the place. Um, the traffic's beginning to come back in. Um, I've been taking license plate numbers down and I did report it. I took them to the police station last night. 
Um, they're just, the, the two families are trouble. I, I, I've been in the hospital. Um, I can't take much more. And I don't feel like I have to move. Um, they're the trouble. They need to go. Well, I appreciate you coming and uh, you and Carla elevating this. So, the, and I'm not familiar exactly with where we're at. Is this a, sounds like it's, is it an apartment complex? Is it's it a, a triplex. A triplex, okay. And yes. You, and you're in the, the middle? On I'm one on thing. one end. Okay. And then they've got six people in a two bedroom and another six people in the next be two bedroom. So kind of combine the noises. Yeah, there's 12 people there. And Carly, you're across the street. Is that correct, if I remember correctly? Okay. Kitty corner right. Okay. Right. It's just getting to be unbearable. Okay. What's um, the street? On third. Third. Off of Ivy. Third. South. Oh. Southeast third. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, sir. Couldn't we take a look at the noise ordinance? Um, look to potentially crank up the fines for disturbing the peace, uh, get in touch with the, with the landlord and let them know the severity of, um, you know, not running a good ship there. And really, um, you know, if there's no consequences for one's actions, there's going to continue to be bad behavior. Exactly. And um, I just think that, you know, I think at all, at one time or another, we've all probably been subjected to that kind of uh, mm -hmm obnoxious behavior right. and so I, I'd really like to see us do something about it that's as important an issue as people that are speeding in town near bus stops and near people where people walk and and so I think those two items are very important uh, for the livability of our community could I add something please yes you know the laws state you know with the hours of 10 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock in the morning but not everybody works an eight to five shift. There's people that work graveyard and there's people that work swing shift. And we have our lives too. Right. And it's called respect. And you know, just. Um, well, I, I, and you're right, I agree. There's a, and I think Carla and I were sharing through email, just there's a certain sense of being neighborly. Exactly. And being respectful of shared exactly. space and those kinds of things as well. Um, uh, Councilor Coleman, I almost say commissioner, but we're back into a different hat. Um, I, I appreciate your the, the dialogue there in, in terms of, uh, I know that's something that Greg and I talked about too, and the code being, um, you know, the measurement of decibel levels and, and those kinds of pieces. Um, is there uh, other thoughts on, is that something that you would want to have dialogue on and be brought forward and have conversation about, or? Most definitely, I think we need to take a stand on this. I've had a similar experience, Mr. Mayor, in our in our neighborhood. Uh, very similar deal. Uh, very loud music and such after hours, and ran into the same difficulties as you right. did as well. And, and uh, the city not having the the proper um, the noise gun to properly measure right. decibels and such. Uh, and so what it came down to for us was the police making stops and whether they're responsive or not right. is a bit debatable and whether it crosses the line of disturbing the peace and being a general nuisance is kind of then up to the officer's discretion but yeah I it's worth some dialogue I I'll be bold enough to say it's worth some overtime if that's what it takes it, you know if we need our code enforcement officer to actually witness the event after 10 p.m. I'm just tossing out ideas and I'm spending the chief's money. But, <laughs> you know, we, we've got people that are hurting and it would be nice to establish some precedent, a method to deal with this. Because it's, it's summer, it's going to pop up. Mm -hmm. More windows are open. Great. Mary, is it, is, it, is it between those hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m.? No, it's actually mm -hmm. before. It's, I it's get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, yeah. so I'm in bed by 8 o'clock normally. Okay. And they'll, they'll wait um, until 8 or 8.30 to start it up. So by the time it stops at 10, I'm, I'm getting maybe five hours of sleep a night. Okay. Yeah. 
they'll wait until after enforcement goes home. Well, sure. of course, they know. <laughs> well, I, I yeah. noticed we have to, somebody wants to have a live band at their place of business or at their home for a, a wedding or something. They have to pay a fee for that variance. Mm -hmm. And wh why are these people not being charged fees for this loud music that they've not applied for variance? Well, I, I could be part of the dialogue we have. It could be part of the dialogue, but I, I, just being one of those, I'm sorry for going through your neighborhood with loud music, Tim. I'm kidding. But, <laughs> um, you know, being a, a, a culprit of that um, before my hearing went away, um, uh, I, I, I hear, you know, there's that, that balance of my space, what, you know, what is considered mine, and then what's impeding on somebody else and being just, re, you know, respectful of, of someone's space. I don't, I don't want us to get into, you know, um, that gets, yeah, that, that opens up a whole time. different pound Pandora's box mm -hmm. as the city attorney's nodding his head. So, <laughs> first, <laughs> yeah, first amendment pieces that, well, so, I mean, I hear the, the conversation and so it might be that dialogue piece that we have. Um, I don't, is that, um, that be a, a work session piece, Greg, or is that a? Could be a work session. I think there, from what I've heard, there may be things that we can look at doing, which I don't want to broadcast here, mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. to be real honest. On TV. <laughs> but um, there may be things that we can do, and I'd like to explore that with uh, Chief Smith okay. and with the city attorney. It does sound much more like an enforcement issue than a code issue, because mm -hmm. our code actually has two ways of prosecuting those things. One is the prima facie stereo after 10. The other is the unreasonable noise, but it has to be mm -hmm. measured. So it, it, it boils more down to an enforcement piece and the way it could be enforced. And, and, and that's the, that's the uh, we were talking earlier, Greg and I, sorry, city manager and I, um, we're talking, it's that um, <coughs> we're having, dealing with an isolated piece. How do we deal with that isolate, that isolated piece versus a sweeping broad right. change of an ordinance? You, you know, and that's, that's the delicate piece that we've got to balance here. Um, I think on something like this, and we had a very similar, this is a couple of years ago around Waite Park and time that events started and whatnot, but again, that was something that we had to work through and and I think we we, we did that, you know, so. Um, Sometimes in a uh, multifamily situation, um, I've been through this before, you can incent the landlord to take a more active role making this go away. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I th I'm glad you folks showed up. I think you've mm -hmm. got us on your side. Good. And there's yeah. a couple ways that we can approach this. Um, the long way around the barn is, is, is to research new ordinances and that sort of thing, which, which I'm willing to do. I, I tend to think that the idea of uh, increased volume capacity on stereos we're, we're going to see that and and to the extent that we can see what other cities are doing uh, in in terms of uh, sound penetration I mean Bend was one of the first cities to talk about light mm -hmm. uh, incursion affecting other people's livability mm -hmm. so so I, I, I think it's worth us taking the long view on that in the short view um, let's be clever and surgical on this that um, what we have here is a business. This, this, this apartment is owned by somebody, a business person. And um, if, if, if we are not, uh, if, if perhaps the manager isn't as responsive as he or she should be, um, perhaps we can do a title search and find out who, who actually owns this property and it may be someone who is not aware that uh, uh, the good neighbor policy is not being followed on their property. But uh, keep in touch with us. Let us know. Um, I, was, I was going to make the same 
comment that you did. Here, here we have our Canby Livability Day proclamation, mm -hmm. and somebody's talking to us about their lives not being livable. Right. And uh, so it's more than just talking the talk. We need to walk the walk. So um, we're going to try and help you. Um, it thank may take you. a little while, but thank you. That's fine. Thank you uh, very much. Ms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would agree. I'd, I don't think it, it is isolated, though. I think we all have a neighbor in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, I, I agree that I don't necessarily think it's going to be a, a code change. I think, it, I mean, we, we have enough laws in place, and I think that they're good. We just need maybe to look at how they're being enforced and work with the chief and see if there's a way that we can make the, the enforcement happen. So yeah. I think I'm that's a conversation we've Thank had. You. And Thank I would you. also say that maybe since they did take the time to come down here this evening, that rather than them keep in touch with us, we should keep in touch with them that's and let right. them know how this is progressing so we can tell you what's happening to correct your problem. Better put, yes. Thank you. And no. if, I, if I can put on my prosecutor hat and advocate um, <laughs> for a second. Um, Your strong suit. This, this is always uh, an issue, too, of evidence collecting. And so anytime, yes, exactly. Whenever, whenever <laughs> your victim like she has copious thinks notes. that you have to sign up for a new job, but part of your new job is evidence collecting because you have to prove whatever is going on. So. Oh, I've got it. Yeah, okay, right. fair enough. Thanks. I, but I, I wouldn't be a prosecutor if I didn't mention it. Thanks, <laughs> folks. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Bad, did you have a... Uh, I'm just curious, is there a neighborhood association in that area yet? Southeast. That's no, a good it's question. North. That's not um, southeast. No, it's the north side, and there are two, but I'm not sure where the boundary is. And you know what? I will check into that because I am the liaison to one of those associations. And uh, if you are part of the association, then we'll see what we can. I'll talk to the chair and see if there's something that that maybe can happen there too. Right. Yeah. Thank you guys. We we will make sure that we stay informed. Okay. Uh, the other cards I have are about issues uh, to be discussed later. Um, so, mayor's business, um, first Friday this Friday, at, starting at 6 downtown, uh, Cash Mob is alive and well and in effect. Yes, Jamie? I'm getting the nod, yes. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, 99E is being paved rather dramatically today. Um, so, be on the lookout. That's supposed to go through uh, the next couple of days and be wrapped up hopefully this weekend. Um, going to talk about um, just uh, make everyone aware uh, we have done some changes to the some of the parking signs along First Avenue uh, and this is just part of the parking study and yeah. plan that we've put into place um, and um, I understand as part of that plan Jamie Stickle our Main Street manager uh, is convening a downtown committee to have ongoing dialogue about the parking issue to make sure that we're um, we're just hearing the dialogue and keeping those pieces moving and and figuring out how that parking will evolve and, and change and grow over the um, coming months and years and things like that. So when you convene that, Jamie, please let me know so that I can be there. I had the distinct pleasure the day after we made those changes to go and get my hair cut on First Avenue. And I was pleasantly, uh, had some great dialogue with ladies with scissors. Um, so, um, <laughs> But I got a great haircut, I would say. So, and your ears are still there. And my ears are still there. That's good. Um, and also, there is a code enforcement piece to this aspect, and that's going to be an education piece that will be occurring through the month of June, just working with the businesses and having some dialogue as, as that evolves. Does that leave anything out of there on that one, Greg? I think we're no, that okay. Good. Thank you. Um, uh, traffic safety commissioners. I know that we've appointed those. Uh, and I know that. Councilor Coleman is our um, council liaison. Uh, I'd like to kind of see that keep continuing to move forward. Um, I don't know if that's a, we have a staff person that we've maybe identified yet that. A couple of them. A couple of them, okay. And um, when uh, meetings for those will start? I don't know that we've set a meeting for those yet. Kim, I don't know if we have how does established that? any meeting. How does that, how do we, who establishes that? Is that something we establish or I they do? Just set a date. Maybe we've got some committee members. We should talk to them on what would be a good date. We're looking at the possibility of maybe doing it during the day. Um, the people, I believe, that are part of the committee right now that have applied are all able to do that during the daytime. 
and I've got, two, like I said, two staff members that uh, I've asked to be on that. One, Jerry Nelzine, and uh, has the officer been assigned yet? Maybe just George. I don't know. Well, anyway, we've got a police officer on that, too. So, okay, that's... And that'll work for me, too. Good, good. okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think everyone that's, uh, everyone that's there, they have flexible jobs. Good. Those commissioners do. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. One, one piece to that that a little could be a caveat is... Those three members, I think we four. had four, are there for a certain amount of time. They could renew their term or not, and then we would need somebody to replace them. I'm wondering if we're discouraging volunteerism on that committee by limiting the time for future members, by limiting the time to a daytime meeting. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, in fact, that could be kind of up to the committee. I mean, it could be nighttime. My problem is some people uh, we'd have to pay overtime if it was a if it was a staff person that you know was especially in the bargaining unit. But I think those are some of the people that need to be in that. Yeah, but that's a that's good a, point. Yeah, yeah, but right now we don't have that problem. Okay. So I'll address it when it comes up. Yeah, I think okay. if we put that in their court to determine, mm -hmm. you know, as those meetings yeah. transpire, and as because yeah. that is a six person six person commission, correct? Mm. It's a five person. Okay, so we currently have. Oh, we got okay. four. We have four now. Just, there's only three people. Oh, three. oh, there's only three. Sorry. Okay. I thought there was three. Hey, we got a uh, You're right. four. You have four. Have four. <laughs> they all have to be there all the time, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are two neighborhood meetings coming up this month. The Southwest Neighborhood Association is tomorrow at Hope Village, um, and I believe that that is at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Thank you, sir. And then the Riverside Neighborhood Association on June 13th is at 7 o'clock, and that will be meeting at Canby United Methodist Church. So if you can make those, that would be great. Um, I have a budget question. Um, we just completed budget talks, at least as a full committee and council. Um, question um, being posed was if there's a – if uh, what's the trigger for reconvening? budget committee and I that question was posed to oh. Alex and Susan and uh, there is not a trigger there is not a no, trigger in fact Haley talked about that during the budget committee that there would not be a trigger um, what you might have to do is um, rehold a public hearing you remember we hold a public hearing at the end of the uh, budget mm -hmm. right committee you might have to reconvene or not reconvene hold a second um, public hearing if there were changes up to, I don't know, 10 percent or something like okay. that. Okay. But we wouldn't have to reconvene the, the, budget, committee. the budget committee. Yeah, They're my done. apologies. I was supposed to tell you that tonight, so I just told you. So. I'm told. You've been <laughs> served. For I've been served. served. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then finally, on a personal note, I want to thank the uh, Canby Legion for a great Memorial Day service um, out at the, uh, at the cemetery. It was a fantastic event, very well attended. Um, they did a great job, a very moving uh, tribute to uh, the men and women that have served and they had a reading of the names of the uh, service men and women that had passed away in the past year and uh, it was a it was a, unfortunately a, a long list but it was a very great ceremony so my thank you to them and and including uh, me in that uh, as well I I, uh, I was very honored to be a part of that so um, with that um, I will move on to counselor comments and liaisons and we're gonna go backwards Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we'll go to Council Ryder. We'll make ladies last tonight. How's that? I've had two cancellations of the two boards that I sit on and anticipating the two this month, hopefully. So I have no report. All right. Thank you, sir. Councilor Parker. Um, I've got some reports, but I, I'll hold them over till next meeting uh, when we have an agenda that's less full and when the air conditioning is working. All right. <laughs> I will see if I can say mine faster than Councillor Parker. On the Cub utility front, they've begun their budget, budget process and the substation is progressing well. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Brevity tonight. <laughs> Sir. Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I attended the Main Street meeting. Uh, there's some exciting projects, facade improvements going on on First Avenue. The uh, Legion Hall and Mike's Place just completed theirs. I attended my first uh, planning commission meeting. They approved. Uh, expansion of uh, its pro am sports um, expansion I attended public works week which is really neat to see all the big rigs and I uh, got an education on the budget committee meetings 
And education, indeed. Education. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was also tied up in budget meetings, so uh, we didn't have a lot of liaison stuff. I was more community uh, events, the Memorial Day service I attended, uh, as well as the mayor. Um, but I wanted to mention, and I'm surprised that um, Councillor Parker did not, I attended the uh, Bridging Cultures kickoff of their Saturdays in the Park That's on right. Locust Street Park. And what we got lucky with the weather, so that was nice, but it was a great event. It was barbecue, had hot dogs and hamburgers, and then they had this um, it was an Aztec group that was doing some yeah. traditional dancing. It was, it, was a, it was a good time, and they'll be doing that, I think it's every other Saturday in the park, and you can uh, get a hold of Jason Green Gingrich for the dates on those. Also attended the Canby Wine Food and Brew, great event at a great location. I'm not saying that just because Lori's here. <laughs> And then yesterday I uh, attended the town hall hosted by Representative Bill Kenimer and uh, Senator Alan Olson. Always great to meet with the folks there at Hope Village. And just so that folks are aware, when those town halls are at Hope Village, that's not just for the Hope Village community. So hopefully next time they come through, we can have more of the town come and, and uh, share their thoughts with the representative and the senator. Um, I may have already announced it, but being that I'm the liaison, it is my job to say so. I will remind everyone, Riverside Neighborhood Association is having their meeting at 7 p.m. on next Thursday, June 13th at the United Methodist Church. And that is my review. Great. Thank you very much. Consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of the consent agenda, which this time is just approval of the minutes of the May 15th, 2013 City Council regular meeting. Thank you. So, uh, motion made by uh, Councillor Dale and second by Councillor Hensley to approve the consent agenda, which includes tonight the approval of minutes of the May 15th, 2013 City Council regular meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Pass 5 nothing. Excellent. Public hearing time. So, we have a couple of issues tonight so um, we're going to do a sweeping uh, legislative public hearing um, statement and then we will get into those so tonight there are four matters before the hearing body that body that require public hearings all interested persons in attendance shall be heard on the matters if you wish to testify on these matter matters plural please fill out a yellow comment card and give it to the city recorder like Lori did here <laughs> I like props, thank you. Um, at the appropriate time, please step forward to the microphone, state your name and interest in the matter. Those people that are interested in testifying as either proponents or opponents, please indicate your desire to speak by raising your hands at this time. So the four issues that we are having public hearings on is there's a noise variance application um, by Doug Sprague family, so I'm assuming you're going to want to say something for that, Mr. Sprague? Okay. The noise variance application for Hairfest LLC. I'm supposing that you will want to say something there, Mr. Monin. No. <laughs> uh, we also have the transient tax. Uh, is there proponents and opponents on that piece? I, there's hands. Okay. And then an additional fee for cutting into newer pavement and penalty fee. It's also on the agenda for our public hearings. Are there people for or against that tonight? Okay, these could be quick. Um, for longer presentations, proponents and opponents may buy time from one another. In so doing, please either in, in favor or opposed may allocate their time to a spokesperson who will represent the entire group. All questions must be directed through the mayor. Any evidence to be considered must be submitted to the hearing body for public access. And all written testimony received both for and against shall be summarized by staff and presented briefly to the hearing body during the staff report. The public hearing will be conducted as follows. There will be a staff report. Questions, if any, by the hearing body or staff. I will open the public hearing for testimony. We will hear from the proponents, the opponents, and then we will close the public hearing for testimony. Um, any additional questions uh, by the hearing body discussion by the hearing body and then a decision shall be made by the hearing body at the close of the hearing on each matter 
or it will be continued to a date certain in the future. This will be the only notice of that date you will receive. Does anyone have any questions about the procedure of the public hearings this evening? Seeing none. Fantastic. So we will move into the first public hearing, which is the noise variance application by Mr. Sprague. Okay. This um, noise variance is an application by Doug Sprague to allow outside music on July 19th for a wedding that will be held at 3500 North Maple. The variance is being requested between the hours of 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. The application um, was also signed, or he had a letter with the application that was signed by the property owners, and um, the police chief also signed off on the application. Great. So with that, I will open the public hearing and... Did I startle you? Yeah, that's Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that was a little while out there. <laughs> Got a little aggressive with the gavel. Uh, so are there anybody proponents on the matter? Mr. Sprague, would you like to? Sure. So the only comments really is I thought I would just kind of uh, maybe give a little uh, overview of what's going on there. Obviously, it's a wedding. Uh, the property, you probably have seen the maps, and uh, the event is, uh, although the property borders along the neighbors, the event is probably two, three hundred feet to the north away from the houses. And uh, so it'll be, uh, uh, the wedding starts at seven, and so we anticipate maybe needing that extra time for live music that'll be playing. Have discussed it with the neighbors bordering the property. I think I hit all of them and really found no objections. So. We're just here to submit that and see if this will work. Great. If there's any questions. I've got one. Sure. H how many people are you planning to have? Three to four hundred. Any of them from out of town? Possibly. Yes, there will be. Yes. Good. <laughs> I hadn't thought about weddings being economic development, but yeah. you're bringing people into Canby, so yeah. tell, yeah. tell them to uh, <coughs> stop by and have an extra meal while they're here. There we go. <laughs> Great. Any other questions for Mr. Sprague? Oh, it's pretty clear. Okay. <laughs> okay thank, you. thank you, sir. Any opponents on the matter? All right, I will. Sorry, Tracy. There you go. I'm prepared. Close yeah, the public ready hearing. Uh, <laughs> any questions by the hearing body at all on this matter? No. No. Great. All right. So um, I will take a motion, yes, to approve this variance. Mr. Mayor, I will move that we approve the noise variance application by Doug Sprague uh, on July 19, 2013. Second. All right. Motion made by. Uh, Councilor Coleman and seconded by Councilor Dale to approve the noise, vari noise variance application uh, by the Sprague family for an event on July 19th, 2013. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, passes, or I'm sorry, all those opposed? Passes 5 0. Congratulations to yeah. the yeah. 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 Um, Perfect. The second noise variance application is regarding um, Hair Fest. That, Kim? Yes. This um, noise variance, there's actually several. One's being requested on August 2nd from 6 p.m. to 12.30 p.m., August 3rd from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m., and August 16th through the 17th from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. The, uh, the variances are being requested for a music festival. Last summer we had similar requests and no complaints were received at City Hall or the <coughs> Police Department, and the Police Chief also signed off on this. Great. We'll open the public hearing for this one. Any proponents like to come forward and tell us about these wonderful events on TV and maybe try to sell some tickets to the event? <laughs> Free <ever time. laughs> I don't know what I can tell you other than that, that I could clarify any questions that you might have. But the, the, the other event is uh, one of them is Harefest, the other one is actually the county fair. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify that. But yeah, we haven't had any issues with it and any complaints with it. So. And we do bring a lot of people in town for that. 
And sorry, just for the record, you're Darren Monin. I am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, <coughs> Councilor Parker. I, I, I thought I'd follow up uh, as well. Uh, Mr. Monin doesn't get enough time in front of the council, so we do need to <laughs> make best use of it here. Uh, how many people did you have last year, and what percentage do you think were from out of town? Uh, thirteen hundred people. It was a one-day event. It was thirteen hundred people. I don't, uh, and the majority of which were from out of town. Yeah. Terrific economic development. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Monin? Not for me. Thank you, sir. Yep. Appreciate that. Uh, are there any opponents to uh, Hairfest uh, 2013 and the Fair and Rodeo concert? Seeing none, I will close that public hearing. Any questions I think have been asked and answered? Any other discussion regarding? this application okay great i'll take a motion uh, mr mayor i move to grant norris variances to Hairfest llc on august 2nd 2013 from 6 p.m to 12 30 a.m on august 3rd 2013 from 6 p.m to 1 a.m and august 16 through 17 2013 from 8 p.m to 2 a.m for music festivals located at 1190 southwest first avenue and i second that Motion was made by Councillor Hensley, seconded by Councillor Parker to grant the noise variances to Hairfest LLC on August 2nd, 2013 from 6 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., August 3rd, 2013 from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m., and August 16th through the 17th, 2013 from 8 a.m., or pardon me, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. for a music festival located at 1190 Southwest 1st Avenue. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? passes 5-0. Uh, quick question, sorry, Mr. Monum, and who is playing at Hairfest this year? I don't, I don't actually know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a question to the live stream, do you have to do that? 80 covers. Yeah, is that, yeah. It's usually 80 covers. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, next uh, public hearing is on the transient tax. So I will. Well, I, I if we can incorporate the last staff report as well because we had a hearing on this I believe last council session um, so without or maybe I'll just go through it a little more quickly than we did last time in, in terms of the staff report portion um, we left with the idea that this was going to be a 9% city transient room tax that would not be charged to the hotel people themselves but the hotel folks become tax collectors um, in the same way that they do for the county currently at 6% and the state at 1%. And this is an additional 9% that is collected. Uh, it's itemized on the bill the same way it would be for the state and for the county. It says the city tax It's 9%. They collect it. They can keep 5% of what they collect, not 5% of the tax itself, or 5% of the overall of what they collect, which 5% of the 9%. Um, and they, uh, for basically administrative purposes. Um, and we're aware that there's one particular hotel in town currently. Um, hopefully, economic development booms. Uh, the 20 year plan that uh, Portland State and the county think that we're going to go to 27,000 folks in the next 20 years. Uh, means that there might be more than one. So this is kind of building for that future. Um, and it shouldn't hopefully have any ramifications on the business in that they're already doing the same activity at the state level and at the county level. Now we're just asking that they do it at the city level. The um, other cities um, and counties also do this. Uh, Bend is currently at 9%. Corvallis is at 9%. Lincoln City is 9.5%. Uh, Washington County nine percent Clackamas six percent Hood River ten percent Lake Oswego is at six percent and some of those even came in before there was a change in the statute which uh, now the statute requires 70 at least 70 percent of what we collect under a transit room tax goes towards transportation um, or transportation facilities um, marketing basically for transportation um, or, or tourism. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. You. I misspoke. No, I like, tourism or tourism-related uh, facilities. And so, uh, thank goodness you corrected me on that. Um, sorry. 
Okay, so uh, this is this is one of the ways in which some of those cities who were in before the statute collect maybe 100% and it goes into their general fund. This isn't the case here. 70% by this ordinance is going to be allocated toward tourism um, and uh, the advancement of tourism in our city. Um, and uh, we left because, or, or left it hanging last time because there was some question that I did not have the answer to in terms of how it was going to impact fairgrounds and camping at the fairgrounds. And so here uh, I I called, uh, I went on the, the Clackamas County Fairgrounds website. I called up the, uh, the requisite person, I believe her name was Jennifer Sampson, um, and uh, chatted with her about A, how much camping goes on there, how much does it cost, all of that. So here's, here's kind of what I got, is that most of this happens during the rodeo and the fair. Um, it's $10 for a tent. $15 for a trailer with no hookups, $20 for a trailer plus hookups. And it's mostly the livestock uh, exhibitors. They usually, she said it's usually not the goers and it's not the workers that stay there. It's usually people want to be close to the livestock because it's their pets right there. Um, and uh, she said sometimes there's out of work or out of town travelers that might stay, but she thought mostly it was those livestock exhibitors. And that I asked her, I said, well, are they, are you charged, is the county actually charging them 6%? And she said, well, we're starting to, because we can. Um, and she also made a comment uh, that there is some, she said very few, what she titled generic campers, which were campers outside of the realm of the rodeo and the, and the fair, um, for certain events. But she said there's so few of them that in the past they've went ahead and just paid that tax to the county themselves, because see, <laughs> they become, you know, like I say, the, the hotel person becomes the tax collector. Um, they're not actually charging it, but in this instance, the county, because it was, it only amounted to a few dollars or something, and so they basically were, were forwarding that. I think they're going to change their practice to just basically, basically follow the county rule, which is 6% if, if you uh, fit their definition of a hotel. I think there is some wiggle room, frankly, um, if you guys wanted to have a slight change, if you were thinking so, in that we right now have a minimum of $5, uh, if you remember the uh, ordinance very well. You could change it to 15 and and forgive some of these people if you wanted, um, or 20 or whatever minimum you want to have on there as an exemption. You could uh, also um, potentially uh, ask yourself under the definition, it's the hotel's a structure um, and usually under planning guidelines or whatnot, structures that say are slabs with hookups would probably fall squarely under a structure, you know, if you were talking about planning for that, but maybe a tent site would not. And so perhaps you could, you know, as a policy matter, read into the fact that maybe tents aren't structures. So there are ways in which these people may not be affected at all. Um, and that's kind of the, the crux of my new findings. And unless you have any other questions, I can end my staff report time. Um, do we do we have a <coughs> estimated first year um, tax revenue from from this? I mean, with one hotel, the fairgrounds. I mean, do we have a, a projection on the first couple of years and of this? The county uh, from can be collected around 11 or 12,000, I forgot the number, but that's at 6%, so an additional nine, or 9% 9 would therefore translate to $18,000. And uh, so, rough estimate. Yes, sir, Councilor Parker. Uh, and is that from the hotel only, or from the uh, the uh, uh, stays at the, the fairgrounds as well. I'm going to say the fairgrounds also because it didn't identify, but there was two locations in Canby, and so the only other location I'm aware of, unless you're aware of any bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. that's the only two that I'm aware of that are paying. And the second location, as follows uh, City Attorney Lindsay's uh, report, it was a very small amount. It was like it had been going since January or something, whatever that whatever that time frame was. So it was a couple hundred dollars. The, m the majority of it came from one location. But 
the fairgrounds um, funds have only recently been instituted. Instituted. Okay, so we don't have a full year's history of how many overnight stays of. From my conversation, it sounded like they were recently enforcing it. You know, it has been around, but they haven't really been doing okay. what they were supposed to be doing under their uh, code. Yeah. So they're starting to do that. Okay. Um, tourism um, is, is this, uh, I know that traditionally, or I'll, again, the, I'll bring up the tourism handled here in Canby's generally been through uh, the chamber. Is that, um, and I know that we've had that as a, a pass through with our negotiation, you know, pieces with the county. Is that, will the tourism pieces continue to be handled by chamber or is that in the tourism office there? Or is that something that we're gonna take on as a city in terms of tourism? I think it could be joint. I mean, it could be a specific project. Um, that was one of the concerns I think that the council had last time was where is this going to go? And yeah. I think one of the things I'd said earlier was Main Street program, they're trying to get people in also. So that also is tourism. But it could be joint projects between uh, um, the chamber and the city, but not necessarily just giving money and saying, here you go, go out and do good. But here's a specific project that we would like to work on with the chamber, and here's the money we're putting in. Okay. The statute itself is pretty loosely defined. It just says fund tourism promotion or tourism related facilities, so it's pretty open ended. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions from the staff report at this time? Not until our speakers. No? Okay. So I will um, open it up for the public hearing. Um, for testimony, are there any proponents on this matter? Okay. Um, seeing none, we'll move into the um, opponent piece of this. And first up, um, I have uh, Lori Bothwell. Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. First of all, I want to apologize for not being at the first reading. Um, my father passed away that day, so please forgive me for that. Um, so I sent Raylene K. Meyer, one of our directors for the Fair Board, who brought up some questions. It was my understanding in hers that I would hear from um, counselors during this time frame, and I've only heard from Counselor Dale this afternoon. So I would love to have had a conversation before it got to a vote, and that's why I'm here today. First of all, I, can I ask questions before I do a statement to Greg Parker? Is that okay? Yes. Greg uh, and, uh, and Greg City Attorney, I mean Greg. Ellison, yeah. City Attorney, I'm sorry. I'm not sure where they got the eleven thousand dollar revenue from us. We did no, start. I didn't say that. Okay, that's why I wanted to clear. No, no, it said um, there was two locations from the report I got from the county. They would not identify the location, but one was eleven thousand. I'm assuming from the motel, and the other one was like a couple hundred bucks. Right. So I'm going to explain the history of the hotel motel tax for Clackamas County. Back in the '80s, when this started the county fair received all of the revenue from the hotel motel tax. It was later that it was decided to start with tourism. And I believe that somewhere along there, and we couldn't find anything in our records, that we were forgiven for that. We couldn't find anything this year, nor could the it's county attorney, so we began paying on January 1st of this year. The reason we haven't imposed it to our clients is because they've signed agreements two, three, four years out without knowing that they were going to have to impose this. And so we're working towards getting that on the, the records that they will be paying, that their clients will be paying the 6% above. Good example is the dog show that's coming in a couple of weeks. We, our agreements are out for four years. I don't know if they would rent from us knowing that they're going to have to impose a county tax for 6% and another one for 9%. And the revenue that they generate to the county is over a million dollars why they're here for three days. But anyway, so we have paid $1.14 uh, February, I believe, and this month $25 to the county. Just to kind of give you a scope of where we're at. Now, we're not in our busy season yet. And as we go, I could continue to report that. I did some research on some of the other counties fairs in our state of Oregon. And Deschutes County really stuck out for me really well. They, you know, they remodeled and rebuilt, and they have about 106 wonderful RV paths. We don't have that. When we say hookups, we mean power. 
Hmm. They don't get water. They don't get sewer. They get power. And we're lucky if we can accommodate a very small percentage of that. Obviously, if you go by in a couple weekends, you'll see that anyone parking in the rodeo parking lot, known as the yellow lot, they don't have power. They're all self-generated. There's only a few that do. But back to Deschutes County, their 106 paces is completely a full RV park. People can stay there for 30 days, couple days. They are the travelers coming to their town in Deschutes County. We, our travelers, we don't have them. When we, <coughs> we don't have the facility to rent to them properly, what they're expecting is power and water and sewer, hook up, or a place to drain it. Um, so we have, what do we have? Dry RV. So we don't offer that. We actually send them to other areas. It is in the Canby Vision Plan that someday we could be that wonderful RV park. And we're certainly talking about that as we move forward. And at that time, I would be willing to pay it. But at this time, I just would like to say that until we really become a hotel or an RV park, I would like to not be considered in that. Perfect. The impact for our, our city and for us will be great. Thank you. Question, if I may. Yeah. You said you used to get all your funding from the transit. Mm -hmm. Do you get any of that? Money now uh, what we receive from the tourism department is about this year four hundred thousand dollars about a hundred and some a quarter okay. which really sustains us we used it um, to build remodel the build the new mainland bathrooms and this year it sustained us because of three days of 98 degree weather mm -hmm. we needed you know that's what's happening and now it'll, it'll produce the beginning of this fair thanks uh, counselor Hi, Lori. Uh, in our email exchange back and forth, you mentioned a fairground zone. Could you talk some about that? Oh, yeah, I forgot that? about that. Deschutes County does rent to their, um, to like their horse events like we do. You know, if they want to stay overnight with their horse trailer or something and there's a big event, that could happen. And uh, they became a fairground zone. So anyone who's not staying in their RV park, their official RV park, and is staying on the grounds near the barns like we do right now, they are not included in the transient room tax. Having come out of the, the exhibitor and livestock heritage, I'm very empathetic towards the, the additional cost. Uh, so help me get the picture in my head. Oh, the kids and moms and dads that come and stay, you're picturing they could be in this fairground zone. And Correct. we're not going to ding them another 9% so they can stay close to their cows and be up at 2 in the morning and all of that, right? Right. right. I would like for not to. That would yeah, just... Agreed. I think that would affect our fare. I mean, it's expensive to bring those animals in in the yes. first place. Yeah. Have you, Lori, have you earmarked where you'd like to have a uh, future RV location and about how many spots do you think you could accommodate in the perfect world? No, we just did an RFP with the Clackamas County Tourism for a facilitator to help us with our visioning plan. The only one I'm aware of is what we saw in the Canby vision plan. So we haven't begun those talks yet, but we should have one hired by fair. So we'll begin that. Thank you. Sorry. I could add that where the campground is now for the fair is in our <coughs> pine grove. And all of those trees were planted historically. So there would be quite a conversation about how we could put power and water there. Well, I'm sure that would be a very mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. conversation. Any other questions for Ms. Bothwell? The, uh, the fairground zone would also include uh, the midway area. I'm thinking like the Rock and Gem show where people, the exhibitors stay with their RVs. Right, because them in like I said before, all of those people pay us to rent the facility from us. And to, to have to add that 9% on, I, I do think some of them would go somewhere else. Uh, maybe I know it's a question for you, Lori, or for Joe. She already has contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, how are those affected by our tax if it goes in? Well, our tax is supposed to be collected by them. And so that has nothing to do with their, I don't know if their contracts ever said, I mean, the idea is the, the hotel charges a rate, and then they have to, under this statute, say, and there's additional taxes. It's like every other hotel. So you could be in privity, right, in contract with somebody, and you, uh, you still owe the government. <laughs> and so uh, that is one thing. Now, whether or not, I don't know if her contract, as I don't know her contract, and I can't give her legal advice, but um, the, uh, 
<coughs> the idea is, I, it depends on how it's worded, I guess, if she promised to only pay that and, and to pay all taxes, you know, or not. I don't know what her contract is. So it's up to the language of her contract. But once again, you could also have the out, if you wanted, to just simply change that $5 amount upwards a little bit since they're only charging, right now they're locked in at 10 15 and $20. If you want to have zero effect on them now, but in the future, maybe if they're charging more, maybe they can, uh, you know, look at it differently. I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 